Hi guys, welcome to the third and final video of Vision Transformer series. In this one, we are going to build our entire Vision Transformer, train it on an image classification dataset, and visualize the attention maps and positional embeddings. I already covered in detail the patch embedding block and the attention block in the earlier two videos. So this video is with this assumption that you have already seen them and we'll simply be reusing those modules that we have already created. So let's go. The entire transformer would make use of three modules patch embedding module, which we saw in our first video, attention module, which we saw in our second. And the third block is a feed forward block, which essentially is just comprising of two linear layers separated by a Gaussian error linear unit activation. Both these blocks have a layer norm before them, which is meant to allow stability in distributions and smoother gradients during training. But some of the research works have also identified that the projection and scaling that layer norm does ends up actually being very beneficial for the multi-head attention layers as well. Both these blocks have a residual connection between their input and output. And that's it. This is everything that's happening within a transformer block. The input and output of MLP as well as multi-head attention is N cross D where N is the number of patches and D is our transformer dimension. VIT like the original transformer paper stacks these transformer blocks one after the other. The patch embedding module is only used once prior to the first layer. And the authors use the CLS token representation from the final layer and projected by a linear layer to get class level logits. The entire model is then trained using cross entropy loss. We can also do a mean pool of the final layer patch representations and the authors found that even that works fine. But in this implementation, we'll use CLS only. Before looking into the code, let's just briefly talk about the data set that I would be training on. For our data set, I'm using a slightly different version of MNIST which is colored MNIST number images on textures. This is the same data set that I created in the video where I built DALI 1 from scratch. So if you're interested in knowing how it's created, you can see that section of DALI 1 video, but only if you are interested. Otherwise for this video, all you need to really worry about is that it's a variation of MNIST that makes it a slightly more challenging problem, but that's it. And once we have built our VIT, we would train it to predict the right number of classes for the images, which here is 10. Let's see how all of this looks in the code now. This would be the module class for a single transformer layer. And all we need to do here is layer norm followed by attention and then layer norm followed by MLP and also residual connection for both of them. We only need two values from the config here, EMB underscore dim, which is our transformer dimension. And second is the hidden dimension for the FC layer present in the feed forward block. FF underscore drop is the dropout probability to be used after the linear layers of the feed forward block. We then have the layer norm for attention and later for the feed forward block as well. And we initialize our multi head attention block here. For the feed forward block, like we had seen, it's two layers and the first layer projects it to the hidden dimension, which is taken from the config. And the second layer projects it back to our transformer dimension. Our forward for this module is very simple. Just following the illustration on the left, take the input, normalize it, and then feed it to the attention block and add residual connection. Then again, normalize it, feed forward and add residual. This is our single layer. So let's move to building our VIT using these now. This will be our VIT class. And here we take the number of layers, transformer dimension, and the number of classes that our output linear layer should be having from the config. As I mentioned, the first thing will be patch embedding, which will add CLS token and positional information as well. This is the list of all our transformer layers. And then we also normalize once more. So this layer norm is for that. And this is our final classification FC layer. In forward, we just call the patch embedding module. And once that embeds the patches in our desired shape, Layer by layer, we go through our transformer. The FC layer then gets the representation of CLS, which is the first token in sequence and returns the logits. And this completes the entire implementation of our transformer and everything that you need to know to build it yourself. However, before ending the video, I'll quickly go over a couple of visualizations that the authors do, which you can also do when you implement it yourself and get some intuition about what the model is learning. The first is visualizing attention map. The authors use attention rollout here. And inside that, what you do is average attention matrix across all heads. 
and then keep multiplying them together starting from the first to the last layer. So this would have a recursion and it would look something like this. Rollout will be our final attention matrix, which will mix attention through all the layers. And this is how we'll achieve that. Rollout will be initialized to the first layer's attention map. And then for every future layer, rollout becomes the product of current layer's attention map and rollout itself. To see why this makes sense, you can consider the following. If I want to know how much I is attending to J at this layer, then ideally I should also be looking at how much node K was attending to J in the previous layers and how much I is now attending to K in this layer. And you would sum this over all possible Ks to actually compute how much I is attending to J through all the layers. This product is just doing that, covering all possible paths from I to J to compute the total attention weight between them. The actual implementation is a little bit different because you also need to handle the fact that there is a residual connection at the attention layer, but the core intuition is this. Once we do that for our train model, we can see that the model obviously looks at the numbers drawn in the center to make its prediction. Another thing that the authors did was see what information was captured in the positional embeddings. To do that, they simply take each positional embedding and do a cosine similarity with all the other positional embeddings. So let's just go briefly on this as well. I talk about this also in the DALI video where I analyze the positional embedding that our GPT was learning. But let me just go over this once more. You would be having a positional embedding for position one. This would be a D-dimensional vector, similar one for position two, and all the way up till position 196. 196 because that's our number of patches. Then we pick a positional embedding, say I, find its cosine similarity to one, and all the way till position 196. These would give us 196 cosine similarity values and you can reshape it to get this 14 cross 14 image. Then once you do this for all eyes from 1 to 196, you'll get 196 such plots and you can reshape them to get an image of 14 cross 14 such plots. Here I have only sampled every alternate plots and hence I get this 7 cross 7 plot. Moving across rows, you move around the x-axis in the image and across columns, you move across the y-axis in the image. A simpler way to understand what this plot represents is that each i, j plot is telling what is the similarity between positional embedding for that position i, j with every other position. And what the authors of PIT found that the model was learning the 2D awareness of the image through the positional embedding. They found that i, j position vector has higher cosine similarity to the position vectors belonging to i-th row and j-th column. But because our dataset is heavily biased towards the center, positional information is actually just capturing that difference. Central position vectors have higher similarity to the neighboring position vectors and everything near the boundaries have higher similarity to every position along the boundary. I presume if our images in our dataset would also have positional variance between them, then our VIT would also have learned the 2D grid structure through its positional embedding, just like the VIT trained by the authors on ImageNet. I think that's about all that I wanted to talk in terms of visualization. So with that, we have completed everything about VIT. I talked about patch embedding and showed its implementation in the first part. In second, I covered the intuition behind attention, single head attention, then multi head and its implementation. And lastly, in this video, bringing both of them together and building our entire VIT for image classification. I hope you guys ended up learning something. And if you have watched this video till now, thank you so much for that. See you in the next video, where I think I'll be covering diffusion models, specifically DDPM. So see you then.